Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Monday, January 8, 2018. In the news tonight, Garnet Street businessman found dead in his bed with a pistol in his hand. Basil Williams accuses the PPP of brutalizing the legal system for 23 years. Mysterious fire destroys Durban Street home, leaves two homeless. And in court, a 40-year-old man is sent to jail for three years after being caught with cocaine. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's newscast begins a very gory, as Nicole John will tell you that. A young businessman was found dead in his bed by a relative this morning with a pistol in his hand. Despite this, his family believes he may have been murdered. Find out more in this Nicole John report. Relatives and close friends of Tevin Paris converge at his lot 66 Garnet Street residence to get a glimpse of the body after hearing that his lifeless body was found in his bed. The deceased was discovered by his uncle David Paris this morning around 8 hours 20. I came and I discovered my nephew in a state of, he was deceased actually, with a, a pistol in his hand. That was it, basically. In his hand? In his hand. Um, Just a little bit. But I don't want to divulge anything anything too much because the police are still working on something understand. conclusive. Not along the line right? of police investigation, but do you know if he's a holder of a firearm license? No, he's not. Was no, he shot to the head? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I just saw blood, blood on the sheet, and that was it. And I went out the room right away. I haven't seen back the body since. Was he still covered so, as in the sheet? Like, as if he no, was no, no. He was just... Sleeping in armor with the boxes on, that's it, shirtless. You know if you had money in the house or something? Not sure, not sure. Investigators are still trying to ascertain what may have led to the young man's death. The deceased was the manager of Corner Cake Bar, located at the corners of Lime and Bent Street, work in Rust. He was also part of the promotion team that held the recent flashback party. The deceased was subsequently removed by undertakers. Investigations are in progress. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Attorney General Basil Williams is claiming that the People's Progressive Government brutalized the legal system for 23 years. Blowing his own trumpet, Williams claims the AG Chambers is now winning more cases under his tenure. Sandy Ramutra filed this report. Lambasting the former Attorney General Basil Williams says the ministry is dysfunctional after it was allegedly brutalized for 23 years under the PPP government. He went on to bash Nandlal, claiming he achieved nothing under his remit at the Ministry of Legal Affairs. The, la the 23 years of PPP rule brutalized the legal system in Guyana. One, they purported to point 20 years ago a few senior counsel, and that was it. No other senior counsel was appointed, certainly any that appeared to be in opposition. That was one. Secondly, they identified a few lawyers and funded them, paid them, gave them retainers. And so, as you know, the rest of the profession was left like that. On the other hand, William says under his tenure, the Attorney General Chambers has seen more victories than losses. The, uh, I inherited a ministry. I, in, I inherited a ministry that is a very has a lot of things um, to do. It never did anything. Um, we were blacklisted. The the last government never got us out. They got us into the black black hole, but it never got us out. We got us out. That's one. I never heard of an attorney general before while sitting in the, the chair of attorney general being elevated to the chair of a big organization that is so important in the context of cleaning world economy. Um, I don't know, I, Mr. Nadal never held a conference as big as the Hague conference or as the CFATF conference. I don't know what, the, in fact, there's nothing for Mr. Nadal to show. William says the AG Chambers will continue its institutional strengthening as it pursues its legislative agenda for this year. In addition to this, the Advice and Litigation Division will continue to provide advisory services and give representation for the state in court cases. Sandy Ramutar for MTV News Update. 
A 23-year-old hire car driver from Burnbush Dam, East Kanji, Burbis, has been arrested with 13,800 grams of marijuana. Rants at a roadblock in the vicinity of the Weldad police station spotted a car dashing through a corner after observing the roadblock. The vehicle was immediately pursued and the driver was caught. The police, after searching the vehicle, found 17 taped parcels of cannabis, which amount to 13,800 grams. The driver is said to be cooperating with investigators. Two Durban Street residents are now left homeless after their home was gutted by fire early on Monday. The two could not save anything as they were not at home when the fire started. Details from Yann Sabrams. A grieving man is now left counting his losses after his 74 Durban Street house was gutted by fire this morning. The man lived at the house with his grandson and the two are now left homeless. The fire started about 9.30 hours this morning. Residents in the area say that the fire started at the power meter located in front of the building. Owner of the house, Lennox Smith, speaking with media operatives said, he was at the hospital when he received a phone call with the tragic news. And I heard this phone ringing, I said this number. And then and a name came up that I recognized and I answered it. He said, you found some fire, come quick. I tried to get here before, but this was... And around what time was this? Short while ago, about 15, 20 minutes ago. In his sorrowful moment of watching his two-story wooden house in flames, the man was unable to speak with fire attendants. Reporting for MTV's News Update on Durban Street, I am Yanis Abrams. More news to look ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods, as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Freedom Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 2540334 or 2540666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24 hour service. Telephone numbers 2541324 or 2541325. If it's not one thing, it's another. Last year, we barely avoid this connection for the Christmas. Now, we got to deal with estimated bills. Because I hardly at home, and I left him again. Oh, move for no teeth, man. Come on, carry me my phones. Granny, you got to get up to date with the tent. So, GWI released this new app that allows you to read your own meter and send it to them so they won't have to estimate your bills anymore. Plus, this app bought for days, it allows you to report a leak right away just by taking a picture and sending it to them. So Auntie Jane next door could report her leak. What a thing! Bye! You're gonna have to show me how to use this app. Download the GWI customer app from the App Store or Play Store. Sign up with Facebook or use the Create an Account option. Once signed in, add your GWI account by entering the reference number found on your bill. With the GWI customer app, you can check your account balance and a payment due date. Report a leak by taking a picture and adding a description.
submit meter readings by taking pictures and entering the numbers in black on the dial. If you're unable to submit your reading, choose from a list of reasons why and have it addressed by GWI's technical team. GWI is a customer app. Download free from the App Store or Play Store now. You are still with News Update. Welcome back. Within the past year, the Guyana Police Force has been able to solve several murder cases which gripped the country. 160 murders were recorded for 2017. More from Nikhil Chondo. Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarain, during a recent press conference, outlined a number of successes the force has had in 2017. He noted that a number of murders have been solved at the end of the year. There were 116 murders in 2017 when compared to 142 in 2016. We had a decrease of 18%. But what is significant is that of the 116 cases of murder, reports of murder in 2017, 88 were solved. 88 were solved. Or 77%. This percentage has been very high for the Guyana Police Force and for this country for quite a long while. And we believe that this ranks, pro this ranks among the highest. The Acting Commissioner of Police added that in the latter part of 2017, there were a number of carjacking which amounted to 47 cases. Commissioner Ramnarai noted that those numbers were unacceptable while stating that investigators have been able to arrest some individuals. Those persons were also charged and placed before the court for the offense. And we currently have a case that is between C Division and West Demerara D Division with one person who is under investigation for one or two other conks. These carjackings seem to be, seem to have some sort of criminal industrialized concept. Let me repeat it. These carjackings, it is our opinion, seems to have what you call a criminalized industrialized concept. It seems to be collusion in some cases between several players in this criminal enterprise. Of course, the issue of insurance, the insurance element seems to stand out. In addition to the force's successes, several senior officers will be retiring from the organization this year. Added to that, Commissioner Ramnarain said he is eagerly awaiting the next police service commission to fill vacant positions. We may appear to be a bit scarce in the senior ranks. And that is because last year alone we lost, quote unquote lost, 13 senior ranks by way of retirement in particular including three assistant commissioners, senior superintendents, and superintendents, 13. And this year, some four, in fact, in a few days, one is going to go off, and shortly after another one, and shortly after another one, and then later on in the year, another one. So that's an additional four. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. One local attorney has revealed that the petroleum agreement is flawed in several areas. He claims Guyana stands to lose billions. Here again is Nikhil John. The government, in December last, fulfilled one of its promises by releasing the petroleum agreement to the public. The agreement that was signed on the 27th of June 2016 is between the government of Guyana Esso Exploration and Production Ghana Limited, Nexon Petroleum Ghana Limited, and Hess Ghana Exploration Limited. However, as was expected, the government has and is coming in for heavy criticism. One of those individuals that have a grouse with the contract is an attorney who is also an oil and gas consultant. Attorney at law Charles Ramson Jr., during an exclusive interview with News Update, says, the contract between ExxonMobil and the government is flawed. He noted that within the contract that was signed in 2016, 
ExxonMobil will only relinquish 20% of the total blocks awarded when renewing its prospecting license. Because the acreage is so large and the contract only requires 20% of relinquishment in a period of seven years, that means that it's going to hurt the investment opportunities for other companies that are going to come in to do exploration and production, and which means in turn the Guyana gets rev less revenue. Okay, so you're looking at in excess of a trillion dollars that we would have lost. The Petroleum Act, Chapter 24, 2 A and B, states that when a contractor renews a petroleum prospecting license for the first time, the number of blocks shall not exceed half of the total blocks the initial license was granted for. It also states that when the contractor reapplies for a second time, that number should not exceed half the total blocks granted in the first renewal. Sorry, Attorney Ramson Jr. believes that Guyana will not be able to fully realize its resources. He added that because of the short lifespan of the oil and gas resource, future generations will not be able to enjoy the benefits. We've got to maximize that value now. You can't lock ourselves in for decades and then say that we're not getting the best value now. Because at some point or the other, the use of that natural resource will come to an end. Right? So it is really important for us to be able to get the good deals now. And if we can't maximize the use of that acreage, which is proven now that the geology is good, right? then how are we going to be able to get more of those oil companies to come in and do exploration in that area? Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Joseph Haynes' Law School has not yet been finalized as the Caribbean Council for Legal Education has been asked to withdraw their statement which seeks to indicate that the permission for the establishment of the Joseph Haynes Law School has been blocked. More from Sandy Ramatar. The Ministry of Legal Affairs is in the process of finalizing its engagement with its Jamaican partners. This is to facilitate the requirements for establishing the Joseph Haynes Law School according to Attorney General Basil Williams. Williams says this is in keeping with the decision of the Council of Ministers of the Council of Legal Education made during a meeting in January last year. But, but in point and in, and in fact, it is unprecedented for an international public servant to actually put a, an item on the agenda that is, that is from an opposition in a member country. Uh, that is unheard of. The Attorney General contended that the council, who is chaired by Reginald Armour, has never made such a decision. This follows claims by former Attorney General Anna Nadlal that the council had blocked the decision for the planned law school. The decision was taken that we will continue to pursue where Chancellor Bernard's and the efforts had left off. That is, committees will be set up, including a committee by the Council of Legal Education, our committee, along with the Jamaican committee, and we will look at the feasibility, continue to examine the, the feasibility of establishing the Joseph Haynes Law School. William says he will be working seriously to alleviate the overtime suffering of law students in the country. However, the school which will be located on the University of Guyana campus is yet to be demarked. Meanwhile, with respect to the resignation of Christopher Ram, the minister noted that no one has been employed to replace him as the head of the negotiation team to construct the law school. He claimed that the team will continue to function without him. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Opposition Member of Parliament, Juan Edgil, whose suspension remains in effect until the next sitting of the National Assembly, believes that it is a vindictive act to miscalculate his suspension. The parliamentarian was scheduled to return to Parliament on Thursday. Here again is Sandy Ramutar. Opposition Member Juan Edgil says he's yet to be convinced that a mistake was made in the calculation of his suspension. He believes it is a devious scheme plotted by the government and facilitated through the Speaker. However, there is no merit to his claim. It is highly suspect of being laced with crass vindictiveness. And here we are. The country is watching. The world is watching. And this is the reality of what we're in. 
The confirmation came following an engagement with the opposition chief, Whip Gaethje Shero, the speaker and clerk of the National Assembly. Through the engagement, the share was told about a miscalculation in the suspension time allotted to Agile. It was brought to our attention that the opposition member suspension started from the 80th sitting instead of the 79, as documented in the minutes. As such, the opposition member will not be able to attend the sitting on January 10, 2018, as his suspension is still in effect. How can the clerk or the speaker act contrary to a resolution of the House? It means that either the clerk is receiving instructions from the speaker and the speaker is acting contrary to the resolution of the House. The opposition member was suspended after he failed to comply with the ruling of the speaker. The speaker had asked Agile to sit, however Agile continued disregarding the speaker's request claiming that he is standing on a point of order. That incident escalated into a scuffle between the opposition MP and police officers who entered the chambers to escort Agile. The police later left empty-handed. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Coming up, Nazim Maragobir is the first female president of the Guyana Press Association and City Hall to begin Border Street project when the dry season starts. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. Regarding the mysterious death of a newborn, which occurred at Machu's Ridge Region 1 on Christmas Day, the police are yet to determine the cause of death of the child. Lashana Gomes Cornelius followed the story. Though several reports surface indicating that the mother of the baby prior to the child's death was seen consuming alcohol at a shop near her home, there has been no definitive clues or evidence to suggest foul play. According to the Public Relations Officer of the Guyana Police Force, Superintendent Jairam Ramlakan, the police have since taken statements from the mother of the deceased child with additional investigation ongoing. However, as to what is keeping the police from determining the cause of death of the child, Superintendent Ramlakan revealed that a post-mortem examination is still to be conducted by government pathologist Dr. Nihal Singh once his leave is over. It should be done sometime during the course of this week. The fact is that the fatalities don't leave, Dr. Nihal Singh. 
and you get started to resume soon. That's the body is there in a shallow grave. If I gotta exhume, there's only one pattern. If I gotta carry bridge more hands, it's kind of, you know, you should know him in Bobby's, one methodologist in Bobby's. But I've uh, been pursuing every leaf, every detail in the matter, statement statement, and they're just awaiting Dr. Mialkin, who is on leaf, to go up here. In the meantime, the police's investigation into the matter is ongoing. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Prime News anchor Nazima Ragabir is the new president of the Guyana Press Association. She's the first female president of the GPA. Yanis Abrams with this story. Media operatives elected Prime News anchor and journalist Nazima Ragabir as the new president of the Guyana Press Association. Ragabir, who was unchallenged, is the first female president of the GPA. The election, which was held on January 7, brought several new faces into the leadership of the association. Zoisa Fraser from Starbrook News is now the vice president. Newly elected president said during her speech that she will work towards retaining the respect of the GPA. Done over the years and for also calling this elections, which I think was very critical before we could move on into the new year. I would also like to welcome the members of the new executive, some of them would have had past experience working with the Guyana Press Association and on this executive and to the new members who are new to the entire process. Former President Neil Marx urged the new executives to work toward a secretariat for the association, which during his tenure he did not achieve. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Town Clark Royston King reveals that once the heavy rainfall ceases, the council will start the reconstruction of Border Street. This is after the council promised to complete the road before 2018. Yanis Abrams has more. Town Clark Royston King told media operatives on Friday that the reconstruction of Border Street has been stalled due to the heavy rainfall and a drainage issue. King stated that the council was not aware of the drainage issue until the stalls were removed. We've had a challenge with the drains. We were able to do that because we wanted to reduce the water level in the drains so that when we do the road, we would not compromise the integrity of the road. King mentioned that the Ministry of Public Infrastructure advised the council to commence works when the rainy season is finished. When asked if drainage was not considered when a plan was drafted, King in Defense said the intensity was not considered. We analyzed the situation, but once we removed the stalls, we then realized that there were additional works that had to be done. And those works, we really did not anticipate to do those works. Apart from that, we've had also had heavy rains, which in fact was <coughs> the real main challenge. In September, the mayor and city council held a meeting with vendors on the project and mentioned that works will last four months. Tom Clark Royston King stated that due to the lack of finances, the council wasn't able to continue the recapping of the street. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news ahead. Stay tuned. Introducing our new brand of all weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Amazing! I love your tiles! 
Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. If it's not one thing, it's another. Last year, we barely avoid this connection for the Christmas. Now, we got to deal with estimated bills. Because I hardly at home, and I left him again. Oh, move for no teeth, now come and carry me in my phones. Granny, you got to get up to date with the tent. So, GWI released this new app that allows you to read your own meter and send it to them so they won't have to estimate your bills anymore. Plus, this app batch for this, it allows you to report a leak right away just by taking a picture and sending it to them. So Auntie J next door could report her leak. What a thing! Bye! You gonna gotta show me how to use this app? Download the GWI customer app from the App Store or Play Store. Sign up with Facebook or use the Create an Account option. Once signed in, add your GWI account by entering the reference number found on your bill. With the GWI customer app, you can check your account balance and payment due date. Report a leak by taking a picture and adding a description. Submit meter readings by taking pictures and entering the numbers in black on the dial. If you're unable to submit your reading, choose from a list of reasons why and have it addressed by GWI's technical team. GWI is a customer app. Download free from the App Store or Play Store now. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. The Ghana Energy Agency will be helping Ghana to save over $340 million with its solar energy initiative. The economy will also benefit as thousands of tons of carbon emissions per year will be avoided. Keep in each Jordan with the details. Under the Renewable Energy Program launched in 2017, the Ghana Energy Agency was awarded contracts for the installation of solar photovoltaic systems on the roofs of 70 government buildings and the 400 kilowatt solar photovoltaic farm. It is against the backdrop that the Ghana Energy Agency has begun installing the solar powered lights in other areas and around Georgetown. These installations will result in an annual energy savings of 1,200 barrels of oil per year, equivalent to 140 million Guyana dollars. 1,116 tons of carbon emission per year will also be avoided. It is expected that a total of 1,404 kilowatts of new solar photovoltaic will be installed in 2018, resulting in savings of about 165 million Guyana dollars per year and environmental benefits in the form of avoided carbon dioxide emissions of 1,681 tons per year. Additionally, the Guyana Energy Agency would be replacing more than 10,839 inefficient lights with energy-saving LED lamps and 965 manual operated switches with energy-saving occupancy sensors at 54 government buildings. This intervention would reduce consumption of energy by more than 617,158 kilowatts per hour while saving the government more than 39 million Guyana dollars annually. The investment cost of this initiative is 50 Guyana dollars with a simple payback period of 1.2 years. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. According to the president of the Guyana Metal Recyclers Association, Desmond Sears, it is disappointing to see the scrap metal slowly becoming a trade of the past. The trade was halted in 2015 and was only resuscitated for three months in 2017. Lashana Gomes-Canelius has this story. 
President of the Guyana Metal Recyclers Association, Desmond Sears, believes that the scrap metal industry is being unfairly treated. He claims that all other sectors which may have gone through periods of scrutiny still stands, but the scrap metal trade remains closed. I mean, it is scrap metal. Okay. It's not sugar or, or, or rice or wood or fish. Or all the other products that the uh, in, uh, agriculture products that people have shipped stuff in, um, and and so on. Some maybe have been caught, some have not been caught. But the con my contention is the trade has never been suspended. You shut it down. You keep shutting it down all the time, mm -hmm. and you never shut down any other trade. I I can't understand. You know, one can become very emotional when you talk about, is there a reason? I mean, you ask me, what reason there might be for them to shut down the trade? I don't know. I really don't know why it was shut down in the first place or why even this government and the preceding governments have, have ever shut it down. Though there was a brief reopening of the scrap metal trade in 2017 for only three months, Sears noted that in reality the scrap metal trade in Guyana has been halted for nearly two years now. This reality, Sears explained, would mean that Guyana's scrap metal market would be no more, leaving many families that depend on the trade on the breadline. We just need something to be done as, as soon as possible. A lot of persons who would have had yards, imagine you're paying rental for yards um, for, for, for two years. I mean, people owe on, on, on investments that they would have made, they, that is in building, in, 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 in trucks or whatever it is, and they have to pay. I mean, they're not earning anything at this point in time and not only that there are persons who want to dispose of metal because I mean in every country they're, they're, they're scrap metal you know it's all over the world you have scrap metal while the establishment of the new scrap metal unit devised by the Ministry of Business seeks to regularize the trade, Sears explained though the Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin and the head of the new scrap metal unit, Ian Smith, have both promised the association to continue collaborating, he believes that the life of the trade is in jeopardy. Finally, Sears believes while the Minister of Business had previously announced that legislations regarding the trade are to be tabled, that that phase should not be a hindrance in allowing the scrap metal trade to continue. You want to regularize it? Fine. You regularize everything. You 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 issue license. They must you know you issue permits. You you issue before you become a dealer. Then you must satisfy certain criteria. Do that administratively. You do those things, and if you find anyone that is not compliant then you, you can take action, you know, or, or something. But then you can't hold a whole trade to ransom, and that is what is happening. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Arthur Ramonson's supermarket over the weekend said thank you to its customers for remaining loyal. Over $200,000 in prices were given away. Kibini Jordan was there and followed this report. Today we're here at the R. Tularam and Sun supermarket where they're giving back to their loyal customers who've shopped with them over the years and during the Christmas season in 2017. Our Tularam and Sons supermarket, located on the west coast of Demerara, concluded its Christmas promotion on Saturday, January 6. The Tularams gave away 27 prizes that totaled over $200,000. Among the customers selected was Totaram, who won the first prize of a gas stove. These are the joyous comments of Totoram. No, I enter a lot of competition, but it's the first time actually winning something. Nicole Austin, the winner of one of the Constellation Prizes, said this was the first competition he entered and won something. He, too, expressed sentiments to all potential and current customers. Well, I would encourage customers to come shop at our Totoram 2018 and forever, yes. Nanini Tularam encouraged all the customers who participated in the competition to continue shopping at the supermarket. We give away a lot of hampers, but first time we do it like this, bigger like this, and we expecting to do it more big next year. 
oh, we, the customers really support us. We have in like 20,000 coupon and I'm looking forward to get 40,000 in 2018. I am Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Survival Supermarket has concluded its Joy of Christmas promotion with a shopping spree and a selection of winners. This is the reward for customers who supported the supermarket through 2017. Here again is Kippany Jordan. Survival Supermarket held its 10th annual Joy of Christmas promotion, giving back to its loyal customers who have supported them over the years. Survival Supermarket gave away 15 prizes. Among the winners were Dolly Kandai, who won the first prize of a Honda XR150. Bagwati Samaru, who won the fourth prize of a trip for four to the Kaito Falls expressed excitement. The first time I went something, never been before. You excited about your trip? Of course I'm excited. I'm <laughs> thankful to Survivor for making me possible for me and my family to visit Thai tour. Thanks to the Mandarin Tasca and I'm um, continuing to shop at Survival and encourage everyone to shop at Survival. Managers of Survival Supermarket on Sheriff Street and Vlissenden Road, Georgetown, thanked their customers who supported them over the years. Right. This, is another, this is another year we're closing and saying thank you to all our customers. It's another way of survival saying thank you and giving back. This is our way of saying thank you by giving back. Right? And for those customers who won, I'd like to extend a special congratulations to them. And for those customers who didn't want in the 2017 draft Christmas, I would like to say better luck for 2018. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for regional and international news, court round up, as well as the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Eh eh, BB is way going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carrying me down by the window factory when he come home it. Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Here is what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Monday, January 8. City Magistrate Judy Latchman has sentenced a 40-year-old man to three years in jail along with a $30,000 fine for the possession of cocaine. German Earl admitted that on January 6, at Light Street, Georgetown, he had half of a gram of cocaine. According to reports on the day in question, Earl was seen by police acting in a suspicious manner and was searched. The cocaine was found in his left back pants pocket. The unrepresented man was sentenced to three years in jail, along with a $30,000 fine. 
Meanwhile, a 30-year-old auto sales dealer was on Monday charged for swindling a $5 million vehicle from a man. Kamal Mirage of Good Hope East Coast Demerara appeared before Magistrate Judy Latchman and denied the fraudulent conversion charge when it was read to him. Particulars of the charge alleged that Mirage between December 20, 2017 and December 22, 2017 at Thomas Street Kitty was solely entrusted by Krishnadat Ramadeen with a Toyota Tacoma valued $5 million to keep it until he found a purchaser. However, he fraudulently converted same to his own use and benefit. Magistrate Latchman released Maraj on $100,000 bail and adjourned the matter until January 29. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. <music>so we have for you in our newscast tonight but before we go here's a recap of our major headlines garnet street businessman found dead in his bed with a pistol in his hand pastor williams accuses the ppp of brutalizing the legal system for 23 years mysterious fire destroys durban street home leaves two homeless and in court a 40 year old man sent to jail for three years after being caught with cocaine the newscast can be viewed online on mtv's facebook page and also on our youtube channel the news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 Three hours and six hours on Tuesday, January 9. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.